Sir. It's actually a combined study, and this comes from Japan. Uh, it's called the Under ATP Study um, and the East AF Study. So what the investigators in Japan have done, it's actually a really interesting design. Uh, they're randomized, or they have, they've randomized 2,000 patients um, in a two by two factorial design. So what they did is they randomized uh, 2,000 patients into one arm uh, which got uh, adenosine triphosphate administered during the ablation and the other arm which did not get it. So During catheter ablation of the pulmonary veins, after we've finished isolating the pulmonary veins, sometimes there can be dormant conduction between the pulmonary veins and the left atrium. Uh, and there's really no way of recognizing that. And one of the ways that has gained some uh, notoriety for recognizing it is the administration of adenosine triphosphate, which can actually show if there's any dormant reconduction, and then you can go and ablate those specific areas and really cause, uh, you know, create more robust uh, isolation. The, the under ATP study is looking at uh, ATP during uh, the uh, ablation, uh, its efficacy in ensuring whether those patients where you actually target ablative, uh, target sites after giving adenosine do better as compared to the patient population, which is the control arm, where you don't give adenosine. So that's, that's an interesting question in, you know, 2,000 patients that is going to be answered and I think will hopefully put the question to rest uh, whether it works or not. And I think most of us already believe that it works uh, because on a, on a regular basis, most of us have already started using adenosine uh, while uh, doing pulmonary vein isolation procedures. The second part of the study is really interesting and that's called the EAST AF study. So what the investigators have done, they've subsequently randomized these patients into uh, getting uh, antiarrhythmic therapy in the initial phase after the ablation uh, versus not. So the hypothesis they're testing is, does the early administration of antiarrhythmic therapy after catheter ablation really improve outcome or not? Now, many of us believe that the early administration of antiarrhythmic therapy after an AF ablation has value because the atrium is more irritable after an ablation, so you can actually uh, temporize that irritability and get better healing, uh, and you can help the atrium remodel, and therefore giving patients antiarrhythmic therapy soon after an ablation actually can translate into better outcomes. That's been our gestalt. Um, but then there have been smaller studies that have shown that, you know, you may not have to give antiarrhythmic therapy and even though there may be a higher extent of short-term recurrences, if you don't get antiarrhythmic therapy after an ablation, uh, in the long term the outcomes are similar. So this study actually randomizes patients into receiving and not receiving antiarrhythmic therapy for a three-month period. Uh, and then it'll answer the question whether it's really necessary to give post-ablation uh, antiarrhythmic therapy or not.